assalamu alaikum welcome to wetlek today i am going to discuss the whole process of digestion so digestion is a process in which complex food particles are broken down into smaller ones so that they can be easily absorbed into the blood and they can be easily transported throughout the body in case of animals the absorption of simpler particles mostly have uh, mostly takes place in small intestine so they are absorbed from small intestine into the blood as uh, blood circulation and they are transported to each and every cell of the body the first step in the process of digestion is prehension of food which is actually the act of grasping food so act, act of grasping food is called prehension and there are different prehensile organs for this purpose in different animals uh, like uh, there is uh, in case of cat if we talk about cattle uh, then the tongue and upper lip of cattle is the prehensile organ in case of horse the prehensile organ is the upper lip and in case of dogs uh, the jaw their jaws their teeth and their lips uh, and their lips or tongue are uh, the prehensile organs so these organs uh, help to capture the food so these are uh, it this pro, uh, act, act of grasping the food is called prehension after grasping the food the food is well masticated which means that food is chewed so the act of chewing of food is called mastication of food this mastication involves the action of jaws tongue and cheeks and teeth and their action changes the complex food particles into smaller chunks which can then easily be digested inside the body uh, inside the stomach of the animals this action of mastication not only grinds the food uh, but it also causes the lubrication of food uh, and this action of lubrication is performed by thoroughly mixing the uh, the grinded food particles with saliva so this uh, mixing and lubrication and grinding of the food occurs within the oral cavity or buccal cavity of animals and all these steps constitute the process of mastication the first site of digestion of food in animals is actually the mouth of animal and this action and this digestion which occurs in the mouth is accompanied because of the presence of saliva uh, as this saliva contains many enzymes uh, that perform the digestion of uh, their respective uh, components like salivary amylase is present uh, uh, is present only in herbivores uh, but it is absent in carnivores because carnivores feed only protein rich diet while herbivores consume uh, starch rich diet in addition to protein protein rich diet also uh, so it is uh, this slavery amylase enzyme this particular enzyme uh, is absent in case of carnivores and is present only in herbivores similarly in case of young calves uh, when they feed only milk diet uh, then there is another enzyme which is present in the saliva of these young calves and that enzyme is called lingual lipase and this uh, lingual lipase is present only in young calves and it disappears when the calf matures so it is uh, absent in adults and present only in young calves because uh, this lingual lipase is important for infant nutrition this lingual lipase actually causes the hydrolysis of fats so we have seen that saliva not only lubricates the food uh, but it also causes partial digestion of carbohydrate content of uh, food after lubricating uh, the uh, the food uh, the food is uh, changed into a round mass which is called bolus and this bolus is then swallowed uh, uh, and this swallowing action is called deglutition this process of deglutition or swallowing of food uh, is further divided into uh, two stages and these are voluntary phase and involuntary phase of deglutition in the voluntary phase of swallowing food is food is molded into a bolus by the tongue and then this food bolus is pushed back into the pharynx when the food enters the pharynx sensory nerve endings detect its presence and initiate the involuntary portion of the swallow reflex actually the pharynx is a common passage for both respiration and digestive tract and it allows only a single process at a time so when the food enters near pharynx then breathing stops soft palate is elevated and this closes the pharyngeal opening of nasopharynx in the next step tongue pushes up against the hard, hard palate uh, thus pushing the bolus uh, to the uh, back of the mouth uh, at the same time the hyoid bone and larynx are pulled forward and this action pulls the glottis under epiglottis and in this way the laryngeal opening uh, uh, is closed 
at the same time arotenoid cartilages constrict further and in this way they also close the opening of larynx so first the elevation of soft palate closes the pharyngeal opening of nasopharynx then the tongue pushes up against hard palate so that the bolus may push to the back of mouth in the next step uh, the hyoid bone and larynx both are pulled forward and this action causes uh, the closing of glottis uh, by uh, with the help of epiglottis and in this way laryngeal opening is closed and the constriction of arotenoid cartilages further cause the closure of uh, a opening of the larynx so in this way food is protected from uh, from being transfer to trachea uh, and in this way it is directed only in, uh, towards the esophagus the esophagus is composed of an upper sphincter a body and a lower sphincter the upper esophageal sphincter is called cricopharyngeal muscle this cricopharyngeal muscle and upper end of esophagus both are attached to the cricoid cartilage of the larynx so when the process of deglutition is not taking place uh, then the uh, then this cricopharyngeal muscle compresses the end of the esophagus against the cartilage of the larynx and in this way it tightly closes the upper esophageal opening but when deglutition is taking place then this cricopharyngeal muscle relaxes and the larynx is pulled forward so the food enters into the esophagus easily once the food is in the esophagus Uh, it is transferred to the stomach uh, by the process called peristalsis so this peristalsis occurs in the form of moving rings of constriction uh, and these moving ring of constrictions move aborally means that they move up in a direction opposite to the oral cavity in addition to this constriction of circular muscles there is also some con contraction of longitudinal muscles so the moving rings of constriction tend to reduce the tubular lumen and in this way uh, they push the bolus ahead uh, on the other hand the contraction of longitudinal muscles uh, increases the size of esophageal lumen and in this way uh, they help to accommodate the advancing bolus and in this way food moves throughout the esophagus and these movements are called peristaltic movements so if the esophagus is not cleared of food material by this primary wave of peristalsis then an other wave of peristalsis is generated and this wave of peristalsis is called secondary wave of peristalsis so one or more secondary waves of peristalsis are almost always adequate for pushing the material into the stomach uh, and thus clearing the esophagus so if food or any foreign body becomes lodged into the esophagus then this secondary wave of peristalsis causes the clearing of esophagus and this secondary wave of peristalsis may cause uh, the muscle uh, muscle spasm that constricts tightly around the lodged material when the process of deglutition is not taking place uh, then the body of esophagus is relaxed Uh, but the upper and lower sphincters remain uh, uh, they they remain const constantly constricted in order to prevent uh, any accidental entry of food from stomach into the esophagus or air from mouth into the uh, esophagus so these both sphincters remain uh, tightly constricted uh, when the deglutition process is not taking place from the esophagus the food then enters into the reticulum uh, where it undergoes digestion uh, physical digestion uh, and reticulum also traps any foreign body which is which comes along with the ingesta so the reticulum performs two functions uh, one most important function of the reticulum is the trapping of foreign bodies present in the ingesta and its other function is the uh, partial grinding of uh, ingesta then from reticulum the ingesta goes into the rumen uh, and in the rumen it further undergoes slight di slight digestion i i am using uh, the word slight digestion here uh, it means that in case of ruminants uh, the ruminants uh, first uh, ingest the food material in the form of larger chunks so the microbial flora which is present in the rumen of uh, of the ruminants Uh, cannot act properly on these larger chunks so the food material which enters into the rumen after the process of deglutition is only slightly digested uh, or partially digested by by the reticulum 
so in order to undergo uh, in order to reduce the size of these chunks uh, so that the to, to facilitate in order to facilitate the microflora uh, there occurs a phenomena which is called regurgitation so this regurgitation step causes the uh, movement of food from the rumen back into the mouth so that uh, it may be further grinded into smaller particles by the help of teeth and dental pad uh, in order to facilitate the action of microbial flora at this point saliva uh, causes the partial digestion of the regurgitated matter uh, and it also causes the neutralization of this regurgitated matter because this regurgitated matter is coming from the rumen which uh, uh, whose environment is slightly acidic uh, so the ingesta which is regurgitated into the mouth is also slightly in, uh, acidic uh, while the ph of the saliva is uh, is basic so this saliva causes the uh, neutralization of Uh, of the ingesta which which has been regurgitated into the mouth so here the saliva also performs the partial digestion of the uh, regurgitated matter and after the uh, after this uh, further chewing of the regurgitated matter and further uh, and the dig- and further digestion with the help of saliva uh, this uh, this uh, regurgitated matter is again swallowed and now this reswallowing process is called rumination So after this process of rumination the ingesta is finally brought into the rumen and here it uh, undergoes the fermentation uh, with the help of microbial flora because now the size of the ingested matter uh, is compatible for uh, for the action of microbial flora on it the microbial flora of the ruminant uh, stomachs rumen uh, uh, includes bacteria and various protozoa and they cause the production of volatile fatty acids from carbohydrates and these volatile fatty acids which are produced from carbohydrates or starches uh, is co- are acetic acid propionic acid butyric acid and lactic acid and these volatile fatty acids are actually the energy source for the ruminants so the microbial flora of the rumen utilize the ingested carbohydrates for their own source of energy and then they uh, produce the volatile fatty acids with by the process of fermentation in anaerobic conditions and these volatile fatty acids uh, are the sole energy source for rum, uh, for ruminants and not the ingested carbohydrates so volatile fatty acids are actual source of uh, energy for ruminants and after the formation of volatile fatty acids uh, they are absorbed across the epithelium of the rumen uh, to be uh, utilized uh, in the body as ruminants consume uh, plants which are made up of cellulose and hemicellulose uh, so the enzymes of the microbial flora of the ruminants stomach uh, break the beta 1 for linkage which is present between the sugars that make cellulose and hemicellulose molecules and this breakdown of beta 1/4 linkage uh, causes the liberation of hexoses and pentoses and they uh, and these hexoses and pentoses uh, provide uh, are utilized by the microbial uh, flora of the rumen and uh, they convert uh, these hexoses and pentoses into volatile fatty acids and eventually provide the ruminant with energy So in this way ruminants obtain about 2.2 kilocalories of energy per gram of starch or glucose and this energy is in the form of volatile fatty acids and similarly these ruminants also obtain 2.2 kilo about 2.2 kilocalories of uh, metabolizable energy per gram of cellulose or, or hemicellulose digested so that dige- uh, fermentation or digestion of both cellulose hemicellulose or starches uh, produces ab- uh, around 2.2 kilocalories of metabolizable energy per gram of the substance uh, fermented uh, in in the by the uh, microbial flora of rumen on the other hand non ruminants don't drive any energy from cellulose or hemicellulose but they obtain about 4 kilocalories of metabolizable energy per gram of starch in their small intestine Uh, because the fermentation of the digested matter in case of non ruminants or monogastric animals uh, occurs in in small uh, occurs in large intestine uh, and uh, somewhat in small intestine so uh, the beta 14 linked structural carbohydrates like cellulose and hemicellulose uh, don't supply the same amount of energy to the ruminant as the alpha 14 linked starches in case of uh, non ruminants 
uh, but the beta 1 4 linked structural carbohydrates like cellulose and hemicellulose uh, are so much plentiful that the ruminant survives well the non ruminants cannot digest cellulose and hemicellulose as i have discussed uh, previously uh, and the reason for this is uh, because in case of non ruminants on monogastric animals like horse uh, the uh, uh, there, there is a lack of intestinal enzymes which are needed to degrade the cellulose into simple sugars. So their intestine doesn't contain those enzymes that are needed to uh, degrade the cellulose and hemicellulose into simple sugars and therefore in non-ruminants uh, the use of plants structural carbohydrate like cellulose and hemicellulose as a dietary source is limited. In case of ruminants, the bacteria which are present in the rumen are themselves a source of high quality proteins to the ruminant. So the rumen bacteria have ability to combine nitrogen uh, from ammonia or urea uh, with carbon skeletons liberated from the dietary carbohydrates in order to form all the amino acids that make up their protoplasm. Similarly, when the bacteria dies or it moves into the small intestine with other digesta, uh, then the proteins which are present within the bacteria can be digested by mammalian proteolytic enzymes. Uh, so the amino acids are used by the cow uh, or ruminant. This microbial protein is considered very high uh, uh, is considered of very high quality uh, because its amino acid profile is almost identical to that of the muscle and milk uh, so it permits great conversion into milk uh, meat and milk by the ruminant but at the same time there is also a disadvantage of being a ruminant and that disadvantage of being a ruminant uh, is that much of the protein that is fed to the ruminant uh, can be utilized by this rumen, rumen bacteria uh, because they find it energetically more efficient to use the preformed amino acids uh, rather than making uh, their own new amino acids so these rumen, uh, rumen bacteria utilize uh, the consumed proteins so the dietary protein that the rumen bacteria can break down are called rumen degradable proteins so if the uh, protein is rumen degradable uh, then the essential amino acids are lost to the animal uh, unless they can be recovered in the form of microbial protein that enters the small intestine. And at the same time all the dietary proteins that are fed to the ruminant uh, are not degraded by the rumen bacteria for their use. So the rumen degradability of the protein varies from protein to protein. And on the other hand, the protein that bypasses the rumen bacteria uh, or which is not broken down by the rumen bacteria is called rumen undegradable protein. And this rumen undegradable protein is uh, can it can be digested in the small intestine. And if this rumen undegradable protein is of very high quality, uh, then it can be an excellent source of essential amino acids uh, to the ruminant. In case of non-ruminants like horses, uh, the digestion and absorption of the proteins and amino acids uh, occurs in the small intestine. After all these processes, uh, the food enters the omasum where it is uh, desiccated means its water content is removed. Uh, uh, so it is desiccated and it, it is also grind between the laminae of the omasum. The omasum also performs the function of absorption of volatile fatty acids, uh, vitamins min and minerals like magnesium, sodium, potassium and so on. But a point to note here is uh, that the absorption rate of volatile fatty acids in omasum is greater than the absorption rate of volatile fatty acids in the rumen. So the absorption rate of volatile fatty acids in the omasum is greater. After mesum, the food enters into the abomasum, which is the only glandular compartment of the ruminant stomach uh, and has a pH of 1 to 2 and it undergoes the enzymatic digestion of the food. The fundic region of the uh, abomasum contains body chief cells, neck chief cells and parietal cells. So the function of body uh, chief cells is the secretion of pepsinogen. Uh, the function of neck chief cells is to secrete mucus and the parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. These parietal cells are stimulated for secretion by gastrin, histamine and acetylcholine. And all these stomach secretions constitute the gastric juice. 
the presence of food in the abomasum causes the secretion of uh, gastrin from gastric antrum and this gastric antrum then causes the secretion of gastric juice and this gastric juice contains water hydrochloric acid electrolytes uh, pepsin mucus uh, or uh, and uh, other inorganic substances so the presence of food in the abomasum causes the secretion of gastrin and the secretion of gastrin then causes the stomach secretions uh, and these all stomach secretions combine to form the gastric juice the role of the stomach is actually to act as a grinder and a storage vat uh, at the same time uh, so it is a storage vat uh, as it controls the rate of delivery of food to the small intestine and it is a grinder and sieve uh, because it allows only those smaller particles to escape into the small intestine uh, that have the size compatible for digestion in the small intestine so first the abomasum stores the uh, ingesta in it uh, causes its chemical uh, its enzymatic digestion by the gastric juice and other stomach secretions uh, and then it uh, controls the rate of delivery of the uh, ingesta from the abomasum into the smaller inter small intestine and in this way it acts as a sieve so the particles that are leaving the stomach during the digestive phase of activity uh, are less than 2 mm in di diameter and the particles which are too large to pass through the pylorus of the abomasum into the uh, duodenum uh, are ejected back into the antrum of the abomasum uh, by passing wave of peristalsis thus the peristaltic actions of the distal stomach walls serve not only to propel the food uh, but also they also cause its mixing and grinding sometimes some types of food materials like bones and any other accidentally uh, uh, accidentally come foreign body can uh, cannot pass through the uh, stomach into the duodenum uh, by normal peristaltic contractions of the stomach so these particles are cleared from the stomach in intervals between the meals uh, by a special type of motility which is called interdigestive motility complex so the stomach is cleared of the foreign bodies between in the intervals between the meals by interdigestive motility complex and during this process of interdigestive motility complex uh, the pylorus of the abomasum relaxes uh, because the strong wave of peristalsis uh, reaches near it and this strong wave of peristalsis sweeps over the antrum and it forces the materials into the duodenum so here is a problem for ruminants uh, like cattle uh, because they uh, constantly eat so they uh, don't uh, uh, they don't have a free time between meals uh, it's therefore the interdigestive motility complex in uh, such animals uh, occurs on hourly basis uh, in order to clear the stomach from any acid uh, from any uh, foreign body so in this way food is uh, uh, the ingesta is uh, transferred from the stomach into the small intestine uh, duodenum uh, duodenum of the small intestine in the duodenum both pancreatic juice and bile are secreted through major pancreatohepatic duct their secretion is actually stimulated by the uh, by the action of secretin hormone so when the food enter uh, food touches the lining of the duodenum uh, the food which uh, which uh, which is coming from the abomasum is acidic while the process of digestion that occurs in the duodenum uh, takes place in alkaline environment so in order to provide the alkaline environment in the duodenum uh, the the mucosa of the duodenum Uh, detects the presence of the acidic food coming from the abomasum uh, and it causes the release of the secretin hormone and this secretin hormone uh, on the one hand uh, one hand causes the inhibition of release of gastri uh, gastrin uh, and gastric juices into the stomach and on the other hand uh, it causes the release of both pancreatic juice and bile because both pancreatic juice and bile uh, are alkaline in nature and they uh, and they play a very important role in neutralizing the acidic Uh, acidic uh, ingesta coming from the abomasum so the secretin causes the secretion of pancreatic juice and bile in order to neutralize the acidic uh, ingesta uh, and it also causes the inhibition of release of gastrin uh, and uh, it seem, uh, and in this way it also causes the uh, inhibition of release of gastric juice these pancreatic juice and bile not only neutralize the acidic ingesta coming from the abomasum uh, but they also Uh, contain several uh, substances or enzymes uh, that cause the further digestion of the ingesta 
so the pancreatic lipase which is present in the pancreatic juice uh, causes the hydrolysis of fats into carboxylic acids and glycerol similarly the enzymes uh, which are present in the uh, pancreatic juice cause the digestion of proteins carbohydrates lipids and other food ingredients and these enzymes are uh, of the pancreatic juice are trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen lipases phospholipases cholesterol uh, esterases procarboxypeptidases aminopeptidases and pancreatic amylases so pancreatic amylases cause the digestion of carbohydrates uh, lipases cause the digestion of lipids uh, trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen are uh, responsible for protein digestion phospholipases cause hydrolysis of phospholipid substrates and uh, aminopeptidases cause the cleavage of amino acids from proteins or peptide substances as i have said that lipases cause the uh, digestion of uh, fats in the small intestine uh, but uh, the complete hydrolysis of the fats in small intestine is accomplished by the combined action of bile salts uh, and pancreatic lipase because prior, uh, prior to the uh, prior to entry into uh, into the uh, small intestine uh, the bile salts cause the emulsification of fats in the gall bladder uh, of the liver uh, uh, and so the complete hydrolysis uh, and in this way the complete hydrolysis of fats in the small intestine occurs in the presence of uh, both bile salts and pancreatic lipase in animals the activity of pancreatic lipase increases uh, when the animal consumes high grain diet the other secretion which is released into the duodenum for digestion is the bile and bile is actually the excretion of liver uh, which is also alkaline in nature and it is essential for the digestion of fats similarly bile salts also cause the stimulation of intestinal peristalsis and cause vitamin absorption so the bile not only causes digestion but it also causes absorption and stimulation of intestinal peristalsis motility in small intestine may occur directly uh, after the uh, intake of the food which is called digestive period uh, or it may occur uh, when little food is present in the gut and it is called interdigestive period the motility of the small intestine uh, exactly after the intake of food uh, may be of propulsive nature or non propulsive nature uh, the non propulsive pattern uh, is known as segmentation and this segmentation activity uh, results from the localized contractions of circular muscles within few seconds these constricted uh, portions of the circ uh, these const contractions of the circular smooth muscles which are in the form of constricted portions uh, relax and uh, and then new areas constrict and in this way different segments are formed and this uh, non propulsive pattern is referred as segmentation activity the function of this segmentation activity is uh, is to mix the gut contents with the digestive juices so it causes the mixing of gut contents back and forth uh, and this type of motility does not contribute much to the aboral propulsion of ingesta on the other hand the propulsive activity during the digestive phase uh, consists of peristaltic contractions and these peristaltic contractions migrate down the gut and these peristaltic contractions are produced by slow waves uh, which are produced continu uh, continu continuously in rhythmicity either the uh, either the gut muscles are contracting or not these contractions of the propulsive activity pass over the short segments of intestine uh, and then they die out in this way the whole ingesta is pushed down the gut and then for a short dis uh, then for a short distance it undergoes additional segmentation contractions uh, which cause the mixing act, uh, mix, mixing of the ingesta with the digestive juices and then the propulsive activity causes the move uh, moves down the uh, the ingesta uh, moves the ingesta down the gut during the interdigestive phase of small intestinal motility uh, strong waves of peristaltic contractions sweep over the la large length of small intestine and sometimes they traverse the entire organ this type of powerful waves are referred as uh, migrating motility complex or migrating myoelectric complex these migrating myoelectric complex begin in the duodenum as a group of slow waves uh, and then they stimulate intense action potential and muscular contraction activity Uh, this complex migrates down the intestine 
uh, and some of these migrating myoelectric complex die out before reaching the ileum uh, but some travel the entire length of small intestine so first thing about the myoelectric uh, migrating myoelectric complex is that uh, they stimulate intense action potential and muscular contraction activity and second thing is that they travel the entire length of small intestine after the small intestine the ingesta moves into the large intestine and large intestine has only mu mucus secretions and no enzymatic activity in non ruminants like horse and rabbit uh, the fermentation occurs in the large intestine particularly in the cecum of large intestine and this microbial digestion and absorption of the end products is in cecum uh, is not that efficient as it is in the rumen and therefore it does not nutritionally benefit the animal as much as uh, as in the case of ruminants the microbial population present in the cecum of non ruminants also synthesizes uh, microbial protein uh, but the microbial protein which is synthesized in the cecum is mostly excreted in the feces the ingesta moves from the small intestine into the large intestine uh, via ileocecal sphincter and this sphincter controls the reverse movement of colonic contents into the ileum it consists of a well developed ring of circular muscles uh, that remains constricted at most times in addition to this muscular sphincter in many species there is a flap of mucosa and that flap of mucosa acts as one way valve uh, and it further blocks uh, it uh, causes further blocking uh, movement of colonic contents into the ileum during the periods of peristaltic activity in the ileum uh, this sphincter relaxes and it allows the movement of materials into the colon and when colonic pressure increases the ileocecal sphincter constricts more tightly the colon performs the functions uh, different functions like uh, it causes the absorption of water and electrolytes it, it stores the feces and causes fermentation of organic matter that escapes the digestion and absorption in small intestine uh, and it causes fermentation of organic matter in uh, monogastric animals or non ruminants in non ruminants or monogastric animals like horse and rabbit uh, the process of fermentation occurs in colon uh, and so for the for this reason uh, they have large and complex colons uh, that that cause the provision of energy uh, by the process of fermentation to the non ruminant or to the animal in the colons the mixing activity is prominent uh, in all species because the mixing and circulating of ingesta are important for both absorptive and fermentative functions of the colon mixing activity within the colon is achieved by the segmentation contractions along with other types of motilities in species like horse uh, the colonic segmentation is pronounced and in some areas it results in the formation of seculations and these seculations are called hostra and these are actually the anatomical structures in the present in the colon of the horse uh, and these hostra are visible even after the death of the animal so in the horse this colonic segmentation uh, is enhanced by the, by the presence of this hostra retropulsion or antiperistaltic contractions are also present in the colon and the purpose of these um, um, this type of motility is to hinder the ingesta uh, so that uh, it may undergo uh, intense mixing of the materials these antiperistaltic contractions are stronger near the site of their origin or site of their production because of the continuous inflow of material into the colon uh, some ingesta escapes the retropul uh, retropulsion or antiperistaltic activity uh, and this ingesta moves into the areas of peristaltic activity and in this way it proceeds along the colon in addition to this there are periods of intense propulsive activity that involve the entire colon uh, and these are called mass movements and these mass movements are frequently uh, involved in the distal translocation of entire colonic content in short in addition to the retropulsion uh, the intense propulsive activity uh, causes uh, the intense propulsive activity of the mass movement uh, causes the uh, distal translocation of uh, some ingesta a moderate type of peristaltic activity occurs in the descending colon uh, whereas in the distal colon and rectum uh, uh, these portions are constricted and empty the materials which are entering the carnivorous colon are of fluid consistency uh, and they are thoroughly mixed in the descending colon and transverse colon uh, and in this way much of the water and electrolyte content uh, in uh, in this material uh, is absorbed and by the time it reaches the descending colon uh, it becomes semi solid and uh, hence it becomes feces 
this feces is finally excreted out of the body uh, through rectum and then anus